Okay, so the point of this video is to show you how to do some of the more complex complex animations for your off supplies as well as troubleshoot some of your issues. Um, starting with one of the most one of the more basic uh, animations would be something that just comes straight up, goes forward and goes straight back down. Something like the stapler, which you can use your basic constraints of a uh, face to the side, a face to uh, perpendicular to that, and then a face to the ground. And if we go into Inventor Studio, open up the timeline, which there's nothing there yet, and we go to the stapler, we can have it go up by, let's animate the constraint that's holding it down, and let's have it go up four inches over the course of one second. And now in our timeline we have something, which remember we are setting this up to play backwards because we want the animation to be all of the office supplies going into the organizer. So I have it going up and now I want it to go forward, which I need to animate the constraint keeping it from going that way. So let's animate the constraint. And because it's sort of in front and um, just know that it's going to be at a negative distance that I need to make it go forward. Pretty sure. Yeah. If it ever goes the wrong direction, then just do uh, a negative. Uh, also remember that we want to leave this, leave a gap of one second at the very beginning of the timeline where nothing happens, so that when we play it backwards from like 18 seconds or however long it takes, 12 seconds back to zero there's one second of video where nothing happens. Okay. okay, what you saw there was this is the motion of it going forward and backwards, and this is the motion of it going up and down. If we have, uh, have them happen simultaneously, it's gonna cross through the base there. That means we need the one that, that makes it go back and forth completely done before uh, it, it heads back in. So going to the end and we'll play back that way. Okay, and you see here in the browser bar of the the timeline there is uh, there are a couple, these are duplicates and that's because these are the all of the animations that have to do with the part file base and these are all the animations that have to do with the part file stapler and in this case they're the same. So you keep it tidy, you only need one. Okay, so we have it go out, up, out. We need to go to have it go back down. And this one is it going up, so we can just mirror that and have it go down. And now if we take it past everything and hit play, it's gonna look like that. Okay, um, the one that has it go out, it's look, it looks kind of close. Looks like it kind of clips the, the base there. And we can solve that by editing that one right click edit and instead of having going to negative 8 we'll just make it go to negative 10 and we can have the up also start a little sooner and that will definitely prevent it from um, clipping okay uh, an issue that some people are running into when they try to do this first one of the part coming up like say for the post-it notes it won't let them the reason why I won't let them is because the constraints that they have on it for say the post-it notes are edge constraints which are the constraining the edge of the uh, part file to the base instead of a face and if you try to animate it up into the air which would be this one um, it would then break one or both of these edge constraints so they those all need to be uh, if you're just having something go uh, straight up, forward, and straight down, they need to be face constraints. So we'll make that face to a face over here. Be careful because the faces are actually really small. You need to make sure that you get the arrow instead of a line. And let's see which way we still need it to go. We still need it to go this way so we can constrain a face on this side. There's the face and to there. 
and then we can just follow the same procedure for animating the stapler up, out, and down. Okay, something more complex like the composition book. Also, make sure you save a bunch as you go. Composition book, we want it to go forward and then tip down. And the way we want it to go forward, we are going to use a mate constraint and mate it to either the back or the front, but the back will be easier. And that's what's going to push it. Uh, we're going to animate this constraint we're making right now to have the book come forward. And we're going to use a uh, face constraint, a face of this to a face of the book, uh, to sort of lock it in place because we want the angle rotation to have it sort of tilt down and lay down flat that way. The thing is that, again, just like the post it note, there's a ton of tiny little faces. And if you dig through the origin planes of the engineer's notebook, you'll see that one of the planes, I guess the YZ plane, is right back there, so that's perfect. So we are going to constrain the engineer's notebook YZ plane to this back face right here, and we're going to offset it by, I don't know, an inch, excuse me, a negative inch, and that's good for that. Okay, and so we can actually, as we do this, go into Inventor Studio and animate that constraint, uh, animate constraint, and we are currently at negative one inches. So let's go to like negative 12 inches over the course of a second, which will definitely be changed, but um, we want it to happen over here. So now we can drag the playhead back there, and it goes in, and then we still have our stapler. Beautiful. Okay, we want the um, engineer's notebook to come out and then tip down, and um, did that on purpose. You can see how the notebook is actually in the base there. We want to constrain it so that it doesn't go into the base or fly away, but in order to make sure that we're still allowed to tip it over, we're just going to use an edge constraint. We're going to that edge to the base with a mate. And then that way, the uh, book can still tip over um, the way we want it. It also still moves this way, but we don't really need to constrain it unless something weird happens uh, during the animation. So uh, this last constraint, that edge constraint of the book, is just to keep it in place. We're not going to animate it. Now we can do our angle constraint, constraint, angle, first type. And we're going to do. Um, a handy trick is to use the predict offset orientation. And what that does is it auto fills in the angle uh, or offset if it's a, a mate, but the angle of the uh, part or the two com uh, faces that you're choosing, uh, it auto fills it in with whatever value it's currently sitting at instead of having to sort of figure out, uh, you know, 90, 85, 88, whatever. Uh, to make it look right. So we're going to do an angle constraint between this face and this face. And it worked out this time. The other times it has not worked out. And if something weird happens, you can, uh, instead of doing an angle constraint, uh, remember first type, an angle constraint to this face, you can do an angle constraint to that face. And uh, regardless, just make sure that it's sitting up the correct way. And so now it looks like this, and we can go into our Inventor Studio, open up our timeline, find where we are, which is up, out, that goes there, and go back to our engineer's notebook, and we can animate this uh, constraint. It's currently at 170. Let's see what mm, zero degrees gets us. Zero degrees gets us upside down. So let's edit this and let's try to 90 degrees. And that's good. And we want it to happen, if we have, have it happen at the same time 
as the notebook um, as the notebook goes in it's going to collide with things so I want this angle constraint done before it starts moving in which you see another issue here in a second but just looking at the notebook it completely tilts and then goes back in which is good but we have an issue with the stapler and what we can do is have the stapler go first which these three are the, the movements for the stapler and these two are the movements for the book if we change the location if we sort of have the staplers go first then the notebook it will sort of fix it not quite but the stapler will get out of the way and then the notebook we are nearly fixed except the stapler goes into the notebook and even though this movement the one that makes the stapler go down um, is a mirror of the other one the mirror of that one I can still edit just this one and instead of going all the way down to zero I'll have it go down to one and then that way its starting position is one inch off of its or as if it were a one inch offset and now we can play and that goes like that that goes like that okay so using what we know about the uh, how to animate the book we can do something a little more complex or do the same thing to some a more complex shape like the pencil first thing I'm going to do is uh, turn off the visibility click and then shift click all the other things turn off the visibility on all these things including the cup so that you can more clearly see the pencil and we're out of inventor studio we're just in the assembly and this pencil is pencil colon one with no constraints on it we are going to follow the exact same path that we did for the book um, the first thing we're going to do uh, is constrain do a mate or flush constraint to the back here the thing is for the pencil there's not a lot of there are flat surfaces but they're not all perpendicular to each other and we've got weird points and uh, slip faces and different uh, extrusions we are going to exclusively use the origin planes of origin planes origin axes and center point of this uh, pencil and treat it like it is the faces of the book so the first thing we're going to do is mate one of these long planes, like that plane, to the back here. And I had a preview or predicted offset, which uh, gives me an offset of negative 1.5, which is good. And then what was the next thing we did with the book? Well, we did the edge constraint. We don't have an edge down here, but we do have an axis. In fact, we have three axes. We have uh, the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis. We want the one that's going the same direction as the edge that we used for the book, which is this one going forward and back. Okay, you can see that one's going forward and back, and that one's coming sort of to the side. So I'm going to do an edge constraint of the, uh, in this case, y-axis, and it might be different for you if you... Um, chose a different plane to start with but we will do a mate constraint of this axis to this face and actually let me put it where I want it so that it um, the predict offset works well let's see if that's good yep and uh, let's go ahead and constrain that y axis to this face right here hit OK and now we are the correct height off the ground, or excuse me, the correct height, yeah, the correct height off the ground. And now we just need the angle constraint of the plane going the way we want it to tilt, which is that plane. We used this, um, we used the, we used this plane to um, made it to the back but we want to use this one to do our angle constraint first type of angle to the side there and if you put in something see I had predict offset it uh, screwed things up it flipped it over even though it's supposed to keep it the same 
what you can do is angle first type <coughs> same thing as before YZ but instead of choosing this plane choose a plane going that direction and it will fix it um, and if I want it more slanty sort of the way it was it's going to be past 180 let's try um, 185 uh, let's go the other way 170 perfect and so now we have enough to make the pencil well the pencil still moves this way but that's fine because we don't need to uh, control it from going that direction or move it in that direction so I'm going to turn the pencil cup back on because we need to make sure that it clears it and we'll bring up the timeline and in this case we have to make the pencil go up instead of uh, like with the book where it just comes forward so for this pencil we need to animate the constraint that's holding it to the ground which is this one let's animate this constraint we're currently at 0.325 let's have it go up to about 8 and just give it some time so we can uh, play with it and that looks plenty tall let's move the playhead past everything where we want it to happen we want it to happen about there okay so this constraint this uh, movement right here is the pencil going down in and it's fine and I think it looks good if uh, multiple parts are moving at the same time okay so we have the pencil going up now we need to have it go forward which is this constraint in my case mate 66 and we'll animate constraint and we're currently at negative one and a half from the back let's have it go to like negative 12 and that looks far enough and let's look at let's get a little more room going here let's close up the base and shorten this down and once again we need the the one that makes it go towards the back completely finished before it starts headed in so we'll play and it goes all the way in and then down okay good and again just like before we have um, this is the one that made it go up and uh, it stays there and then we need to have it go back down so we can mirror this and it will do the same thing and just play check this as we go up and down beautiful and in order to have it uh, tip over we are going to animate the angle constraint associated with this pencil which is this one and we'll right click animate constraint and we are currently at 170 degrees off of that side let's see what zero gets us which way is zero going to make it go mm, zero is no good let's try 90 again right click edit let's have it go from 170 to 90 that looks pretty good and let's shorten it and I would like it to be completely done before it starts moving and so it tips up and goes up back and back down you can have the have it turning this is it turning this is it going up you can have it turning and going up at the same time if that is your creative preference and you can actually uh, include it with the one part of it the one this is the movement of it going backwards so we can have it sort of twist up and go at a diagonal if that's what you want it to look like and with that bit of information and all the other stuff you should be able to complete uh, the entire animation where each of the pieces come out or well they start out and lie back into their correct location without having solid objects pass through solid objects remember leave a gap of a second at the beginning and when you go to actually record it uh, make sure that you have it in reverse direction where the first number is however far down the line the last thing happens is plus a second so if this is all I wanted the recording ends at 7 or the movement ends at 7.5 I would call it 8.5 and that way I have 
one second on either side because I left a tail of a second here and added a second there. And uh, also remember preview no render uh, so it doesn't take forever. And uh, all the other um, settings or details for recording you can find in the chess set um, shared folder. And uh, that should be enough. All right, good luck.